Among any list of the greatest guns, it's hard to not include the HKG-3. It wasn't particularly refined or accurate, but it was a true battle rifle. Hard hitting, reliable, and built like a tank. The G3 would lead to the PSG-1, oh, and a little SMG you just might have seen before. With all the success the G3 brought HK, I was surprised to hear HK didn't even develop the G3, but rather most of the development took place in Spain. After World War II, the STG-44 and Car 98 were being rapidly outclassed by rifles like the AK and the M14, and Germany needed an upgrade. At the tail end of the war, weapons designer Ludwig Vorgrimler was working with Mauser to develop a brainchild weapon, the STG-45M, which borrowed the blowback mechanism of the legendary MG-42. Not only did the design work very well, but it was cheap to manufacture, but the war ended before production could ever begin. Wargrimler and his associates would eventually move to Spain, where they founded SETME. Funded by the Spanish government, SETME further refined the STG-45M design and created the SETME Modelo 58. Meanwhile, back in Germany, plans to manufacture their own FN FAL fell through because well, let's just say Belgium and Germany weren't too buddy-buddy after the war. Perhaps feeling a little homesick, Wurgemler allowed Germany to purchase the SETME design, which would be manufactured by a little brand called Heckler & Koch. This is LCT's take on the G3 or the LC3. To be specific, it's the most well-known variant, the G3A3, with the original style slim polymer handguard. I think this is one of the best airsoft releases of the year and is truly worthy of the G3 name. Today, I'll show you why. For those of you who don't know, LCT is well known for their robust steel externals and excellent quality control. They're not really the type of company to innovate with new technologies, but rather they'll stick with what they know works. Let's take a look at the packaging. Pretty standard cardboard box with some LCT graphics. Inside, the gun is housed in a molded plastic tub with some foam protection. Not much in the way of accessories, but you do get a pretty cool laser cut steel keychain so you can show off to your buddies. Yeah, that's right, I got an LCT. You also get this metal wire, which I had to ask our tech about, and we're pretty sure it's to pull the anti-reversal latch on a seized mech box, but the instructions don't mention it. Speaking of the instructions, it does include a full parts breakdown as well as assembly instructions in case you took your gun apart and can't figure out how to put it back together. Interesting how all the safety diagrams are with an AK, but I guess that really tells you about LCT. Let's talk externals on the LC3. For anyone who hasn't held a steel airsoft gun before, do yourself a favor and give one a nice fondle. It's not just that it's heavier, which it is, or that it's stronger, which it also is. It's rather the texture. The finish just has that trademark steel shine. And it's just the way the weld seams look, and even the way the selector wears in. It just really feels authentic. And there is no shortage of steel in this rifle. Everything, and I mean everything that's steel on the real G3, or externally at least, is steel on this one. Yes, even that charging handle is steel, so you can HK slap this gun to your heart's content. And boy, does that sound good. When you pull back the charging handle, it also opens the ejection port, revealing the rotary hop-up unit. This gun weighs in at 4.4 kilograms or 9.7 pounds, which is more or less the same of the real G3. It's also about double the weight of most airsoft guns on the market, so this is certainly not a run and gun style weapon. It's also quite front heavy with the center of balance right about at the magwell, so hope you got strong wrists. That being said, if you like solid build quality, this gun is tough to beat. If an AK is like a shovel, then this gun is kind of like a sledgehammer. Hyperboles aside, seriously, I am very impressed. Other than the selector markings, this gun is devoid of any trades. Somewhat of a downer, but the stamp steel is so nice to look at, it's almost forgiven. The markings that are there are embossed and painted into the receiver. No cheap decal here. 
Taking a look at the polymer stock, it is of one fixed length, and the length is about the same as an M4 stock fully extended out. Now, if this isn't a problem for you, then it is decently comfortable, though the butt pad is a hard plastic. Speaking of that butt pad, it is quite a clever design. Give it a hard yank, and it pops right out. It's held in there nice and tight, but there are no screws that you'll inevitably lose. Inside the stock is ample storage for almost any battery with a Tamiya connector. A reminder that this gun does not have a MOSFET, so I would be careful with an 11.1. Moving on to the pistol grip, it fits the hand well with its contoured grooves, but is rather on the small side, especially for such a long gun. Now, anyone used to an MP5 grip will more or less feel right at home. The trigger guard is a stamped piece of steel, but that edge can dig into your middle finger, especially because this is rather a front heavy gun. The fire selector is on the left side of the gun only, and it takes quite a bit of force to activate. I'd rather this than a loose switch, and it does click into place nicely. The way it's designed, it's pretty easy to go from safe to auto, but going from auto back up to safe, you'll probably have to readjust your grip. Moving forward to the mag release, it's like any MP5 release, but it takes quite a bit of effort. I sense there's a theme here with this gun, and I quite like it. You have to commit to any action. There is a secondary mag release for your index finger, but I have to do some serious finger yoga to reach it. It's a pretty common complaint of the G3, so I am not alone. Taking a look at the mag itself, it is a 140 round mid cap made of steel and the detailing is just gorgeous. It's got a pretty decent weight as well, but it's still lighter than most GBBR mags. You'll notice a little notch at the top that locks into the mag well like an AK. This is actually not true to the real G3. On the real G3, you can insert the mag like an AK or straight vertical like an M4. I think they did this for excellent mag fitment and it is excellent. It is hands down the best fitment I've ever seen with a solid clunk into place and zero play in any direction. I will say though that inserting the mag isn't super smooth and will take a bit of practice to do quickly. Moving on to the front of the gun, as I said before, this is the slim handguard variant, as opposed to the larger G3 handguard with that bipod. This is more or less the original design of the G3, and I just love that super classic feel. It's made of nylon fiber and has a really nice grippy texture. A single pin removes the handguard, so you can easily swap it out for one with rails or even this wood one, which is pretty cool. Looking at the sights, it's like an MP5 sight, or rather I should say an MP5 sight is like this one. I really dig the cast steel texture and I love that contrast between the smooth lathe barrel. The rear sight is a rotary unit that is adjustable for windage. It has three different peep sights for elevation and one open notch for general purpose. Following the theme, it takes quite a bit of force to rotate, but again, clicks very nicely into place. If iron sights aren't really your thing, there are standard notches for G3 slash MP5 top rails. So who is this gun for? Well, for one, I really want this rifle for myself. It's easily the nicest airsoft G3 ever made, and I would say one of the most solid airsoft guns ever. All that for a little more than 550 Canadian dollars, and it's relatively affordable as well. That being said, in order to game this gun, you have to really want to game it. The weight aside, ergonomically, it's bulky and unwieldy, and the sling mounts and the selector switch are for righties only. But with its solid steel externals, its long inner barrel and proven LCT internals, it would make one hell of an outdoor gun. As always, thanks for watching, subscribe for regular updates, and we'll catch you on the next one.